Hi, uh, good morning or good afternoon to you all. I uh, see everybody's getting logged into the webinar. Um, we'll just give everybody just a, a minute or two to uh, get connected to the audio and uh, get their coffee or whatever you're drinking, <laughs> depending on what time of day it is for you. Uh, and, and then we will get rolling with this webinar. I'm super excited about it. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay, everybody is getting logged in and we will get started in just a minute here. Um, as I see folks get uh, connected and settled. Awesome. Well, we got a bunch of people in here already. So I think uh, in the interest of everybody's time, I'm going to I'm going to lead things off. Um, as I said, super excited uh, to uh, to share this topic with you all today. Um, we're going to be talking about how to gain new clients uh, through targeting your ideal customer profile. And uh, we have uh, Steve the Hurricane Weiss from the Home Care Evolution with us today as our guest speaker. Um, and um, uh, many of you may know him already. I'll give him a proper introduction in, in just a second here. Um, when, uh, just after going over a couple housekeeping items. So you all have probably been on about a million Zoom calls in the last uh, few years, but just in case, um, there's the Q&A uh, button there that you can use um, if a question comes up in the middle, um, if we don't get a chance to address it uh, during the presentation, um, that's definitely something we can take a look at after. Uh, also, we are recording this, uh, so that way uh, if you have a colleague or a uh, some uh, peer in the industry that you know who might benefit from this material, um, we'll have that up on our website uh, shortly after the presentation within a day or so. Uh, then at the very end, there is a very, very short four question survey. It would be so helpful if you filled that out. Um, and so, yeah, those are your Zoom instructions. I would love to go ahead and introduce uh, Steve the Hurricane. Um, many of you on here probably already know Steve. Um, you may be a client of his already. Um, and in some respects, perhaps he needs no introduction uh, to the home care agency. But just in case, if you're not familiar with him, he is known for his expertise in all things sales and marketing within the home care industry. Um, he has sold out his boot camps and seminars literally all over the world and has 20 years of knowledge uh, within this specific industry. And I think many folks out there like myself um, know him as the marketing guru when it comes to home care. Um, he's super passionate about helping service providers um, and to help find uh, those in need of care. Um, and his ultimate goal is uh, to help these service providers increase their census, uh, revenue, and ultimately profits. Um, through his programs and presentation, he has helped thousands of indiv individuals grow their companies and blow their competition out of the water. Uh, and he's just been a total transformation um, when it comes to businesses that are struggling uh, around the nation to help them turn into thriving home care businesses. Um, so that is Steve. I'm super excited to have him here. If, if you haven't met me before, I'm Jen. Uh, I am one of the co-founders of Augusta Home Care Recruiting. Hey, Steve. Um, and uh, I got my start in the industry and all the way back in 2009. I began as a caregiver, worked my way up through a couple different um, uh, senior care specific organizations, uh, ultimately managing uh, sales for uh, uh, some really big sales teams. And, uh, and then uh, after following that, um, wanted to focus on the biggest problem that we saw in home care, which is recruiting the best caregivers. Um, so that's what home, uh, Augusta Home Care Recruiting does. We help home care agencies recruit the best possible caregivers through our software. So um, without further ado, Steve, I'd love to turn it over to you. Um, so that way you can 
uh, share more about how to gain new clients through the ideal customer profile. Jen, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. And everyone who's watching live with me, I appreciate it as well. Um, today, actually, I didn't get a chance to say this to you before, but today's actually a very special day for me. Uh, today represents 11 years, 11 years since I started the company. And I'm actually holding a plaque that my staff gave to me back in 2018, I think it was, which was like my my eighth year or, or sixth year or whatever it was in business. I forget the, the, the numbers, just it's 11 years, right? But um, what's cool about this plaque is uh, it's actually, it says the night your path became your own is what it says on there. And it's actually a picture of the night sky from Manalapin, New Jersey on June 20th, 2012, which is the day I started the company. So I, uh, I was just sharing that with my clients a little while ago, and I figure since we're in this meeting here, I share it with all of you. So thank you for being a part of my official anniversary celebration today. So this is exciting. That's awesome. Congrats. Thank you. So as everybody can see, hopefully you can see my computer screen right now. And as you're looking at my computer screen, you'll see this slideshow right here that I have prepared for us today. And I'm just super excited to have this, this uh, presentation here with you. Let me see if I can just swap this real quick so that you can actually see it. Perfect. Bing. And, uh, you know, this is my company, Home Care Evolution, and we help home care businesses adapt to the changing circumstances that they're dealing with, transform it so they can thrive for at least the next decade to come. And, you know, in this lesson here, this video or this recording that I'm going through with you, I'm going to share with you, like, this is your business today and everything that we're talking about. The reason why I call it uh, everything that, that you heard Jen just say at the beginning here and the title of it here, and I'm, I'm referencing the home care evolution is because it's, it's, it's not just sales and marketing. Sales and marketing is one component of it. But when we bring in the right type of customer, when we bring in the right type of referrals, when we're able to scale our business around medically complicated patients, and that's what I want you to write down, medically complicated patients. When you bring in medically complicated patients, that's going to make it easier for you to market because you're marketing a specific type of patient. You're not just asking for a senior. You're asking for a specific type of senior. It'll make it easier to operate your business from an operational standpoint because you're going to be dealing with patients that have high hours of needs, which makes it easier to staff your cases and keep those caregivers. It's going to make it easier to retain because your caregivers, when they come to you, instead of trying to give one caregiver four or five patients to make up a 40-hour work week, you get one patient that needs 40 hours of care. It's one-to-one. -one. You get a patient that needs uh, 84 hours of care. That's two caregivers full-time, right? So it makes it a lot easier to recruit and retain your caregivers. And obviously, when you have a bunch of clients that have high needs, the revenue generated per client, the profit margin per client will be significantly higher than if you had a whole bunch of clients with very low hours per client, which therefore this is what makes it a lot easier for you to scale and grow your business. And as a result, this is why our clients do significantly better than what the industry average is. Client census growth. This is the number of patients on a census. Most agencies grow about 7% in their census year over year, just from the latest home care pulse data. My clients usually grow their census on average 25% or greater year over year. They grow their weekly billable hours. Industry average is about 12%. My clients grow their weekly billable hours about 60% greater than what they did the year before. And then when it comes to total revenue, the actual industry average is only one and a half percent. Meaning if you did a million dollars, you did $1,010,000 in the next year. Even the people who are the masters of the industry, the Home Care Pulse data shows that they grew their business to about 7%. So that's great, you got a $5 million business and you grew it by 7%, which means you had this $5 million business and you grew it to uh, about a $5 million business is now five point, you know, four million dollars in the next year, 5.35, right, percent, or uh, 5.35, 5 million, 350,000. Whereas my clients on average grow their business about 35 times, 35% over what they did a year before because they're executing all the things that I'm teaching you here today. So my goal is for all of you to be my next success story. That's why we're here. Um, as we go through today, I'm going to do uh, a 90-minute session condensed 
into 45 minutes for you so that we can be on time for all of us and be mindful of your time. So I'm going to condense this. So I'm going to fly through this presentation. I also have a, a bonus to you that if you want to work with us, I have a special promo that you can take advantage of. I'm going to discuss that at the very end for just like two minutes. I'm going to show you what that is. And then we'll wrap up with the round robin of, of questions and answers. As Jennifer said, we have some questions that people have given us. Uh, that they submitted in advance. Also, if you have questions that you want to ask live, we'll make sure that we're here and we have time for that at the very end, all right? So I'm just going to stick and move, but I hope that you all want to be my next success story because I want you to be successful. When you're successful, you're taking care of patients, you're keeping people out of the hospital, ultimately that is the goal. I love helping you so that you can help them, and that's the ultimate goal, right? So again, I call this the home care evolution. So the first thing you want to write down above all else is referrals equal freedom. By the way, this background here, for those of you who don't know, um, I actually have a, a, a multiple different type of clients. The top level of client that I have are what's called the Elite Academy. Elite Academy, we get together several times a year. We have board meetings. We discuss all the challenges people who own home care businesses face. And so this was a meeting that we had in Denver, Colorado. And on our third day, after spending two boardroom days in you know a, a formal setting, kind of roll up our sleeves, let our hair down, and we do something local. And so being in Denver, Colorado, we decided to go to the Red Rocks Amphitheater, which is beautiful. And so these were some of the members who attended that meeting last year. That's why you see this picture on my screen. But again, if you're writing down referrals equals freedom, what this basically means is from an operational standpoint, if you want to grow your business, if you want to take care of more patients, if you want to be able to, to scale and have multiple locations and become a regional provider, you know, make more money, all these have more time for yourself because you have development of staff who can run the company for you in the 40 hours so that you don't have to spend 100 hours a week running your business. If you want to have all of those things, you have to have an abundance of referrals coming in. Every single time we take our foot off the gas from having an abundance of referrals coming in, that is when our business always starts to go like this. And I'll also tell you, that just like with SEO, because SEO is one way to get business, but it's not the only way to get business. And it's also not the most effective way. That's why a lot of you are here right now, because like, yeah, I'm doing Google ads and I'm doing this, but it's not working. It's not enough me to be able to scale and grow my business. Plus, I have a hard time converting those leads, and that's a very true statement. But also, every time people take their foot off the gas marketing, it takes weeks and months to get it going again. It is such a painful process. As a matter of fact, our phones have been blowing up this year because now that the pandemic is officially over and behind us, all of these folks who used to be in referral sources before the pandemic are no longer in there because everybody turned over, people stopped marketing, and now all of a sudden they're trying to do it again and they, and they just can't get into places. So referrals really does equal freedom. Put it this way, it's easier to, to turn away a case because you can't staff it than it is to have a caregiver that you don't have work for. Because when you have a caregiver that you don't have work for, you're gonna lose that caregiver. And for those of you that don't know, in the latest Home Care Pulse report, right, just came out a couple weeks ago, in the latest Home Care Pulse report, the cost of getting one caregiver is about $600. So if you spent $600 to get one caregiver and you don't have work for that caregiver and you lose her, you essentially wasted $600, not to mention your office staff's time and everything else. So by having an abundance of referrals, that will give you the freedom to run your business the way that you want to. So I hope everybody wrote that down. Referrals equals freedom, right? Moving forward, the next slide. Know your target customer. This is probably the most important aspect of it because it's not just referrals equals freedom. I can get referrals of people calling me all day. They're all not going to sign up, but it's a specific type of customer. And so this is where I want you to write down my, my ever famous acronym, NERD, and write it vertically, NERD. N equals need, a great need patient. You want somebody, if you wanna write next to need, write equals five or more conditions. Somebody who has five or more conditions, that person has a great need. This isn't somebody who's calling around asking for a bath visit or somebody to just watch mom on the weekend because they're going away on vacation. 
No, this is somebody who, if you don't provide care for them because their need is so great, their alternative, their option is paying privately to move into a nursing home because their need is so great. So need equals five or more conditions, five or more ailments, right? They could have a primary condition, say uh, they have congestive heart failure, but with that congestive heart failure as their primary, they also have high blood pressure. They're also a diabetic. They also have macular degeneration, so they're starting to go blind in their eyes, and they have shortness of breath. That's five different ailments, five different conditions. That's somebody that when they call you, they're going to they're going to be asking for care every single day and for a lot of hours in their shift. That's part of it. Second, the E in nerd stands for elderly. Next to elderly, right, 65 and older. Now, do we every once in a while take care of patients that are younger than 65? Of course we do. As a matter of fact, I personally feel that when we get somebody younger than 65 coming on our services, that's tragic because that person is too young to be on services, but it does happen. But in essence, the majority of our patients are over the age of 65. We're looking for elderly. And I'm going to go as far as to say that the majority of our patients really are older adults, right? 80 plus. But for all arguments sake, elderly equals 65 and older. The next is the R. So you got the nerd, need, elderly, R stands for resources. Resources, somebody who has the financial qualifications for your services. Now you may be from a home health company and you're looking for insurance. Well, what insurance do you want more than any? You want Medicare, right? Medicare, everybody has as part of their benefit. But some people have secondary insurance and other people have TRICARE and they have this insurance and that insurance. You all want Medicare. People who have resources have Medicare. That's what you're looking for. So it's all about the people who have the resources in this instance. Now, I'm not going to just say that we don't take care of people that don't have resources. We do. The government has systems for it. I'm going to show you that on the next slide. Just on this instance here, we're looking for the people who have the resources financially. And then the D in nerd, right, need, elderly, resources, and then we're talking about people who are either dementia patients and or permanently disabled. A dementia patient is going to be a long-term patient. Somebody who's permanently disabled is going to be a long-term patient. They're not just looking for services for you to sign them up and start this weekend and cancel next week on Friday. No, they're signing up for services and their services are indefinite which means they could be with you for three months. They could be with you for six months. They could be with you for the next 18 months, two years. That is a much smarter way to build your business. An abundance of referrals, referrals equals freedom, of this nerd target customer gives you the freedom to run your business the way that you want to run your business and scale it relatively quickly, all right? So now let's just talk about the different type of clients that we have, because caring for all seniors falls into a bunch of buckets. For people who don't have the resources, that's what Medicaid is for, all right? So not Medicare. I know this is a little typo here. Medicaid is what that exists for, and, and it's the truth. You can look at any state, approximately 40% of the senior population are on Medicaid. That means people that have nothing have a way to get the care that they need. If you are a Medicare provider, God bless you. Thank you for being a Medicare provider. Something I will recommend to you as a Medicare provider, if you're not a client of mine, because many of you are clients of mine who are a Medicaid, Medicaid, Medicaid provider, get your balance where it's 50% Medicaid and 50% private pay. The private pay offsets what Medicaid doesn't pay because Medicaid is limited. And there are certain labor laws and things that you can't do, and you're stuck. And this is where a lot of Medicaid folks, like, see, if I got this $5 million Medicaid business, we're not making anything. I can't get caregivers. It doesn't pay enough. What am I going to do? And I say make it 50-50. So, so, so keep your $5 million of Medicaid and grow your private pay side to also be $5 million, and then you continue to take on more Medicaid patients. Maintain what you have grow the private, get it 50-50, so that then you can overcome the shortages from the revenue that's coming in from the Medicaid side of it. But again, 40% of the seniors are on Medicaid. Now, that doesn't mean that the other 60% have all of the resources to be able to financially support private pay. No, they don't. This is why care.com exists. 
This is why uh, Honor Networking exists and other companies where they would hire the caregiver directly to work for them exists. Is it going to be as good as with an agency? The answer is no, because there's no backup, right? If they hire a person, it doesn't work out, they got to hire another person. And it's the same thing that we're dealing with, but there's no oversight, right? So it's not as good, but, but this is what people at that income level can afford. And that is an option available to them. And then that leaves the rest for the agency that you are building your business around trying to find. So next question, how many of these people exist in our area, Steve? How many of these people exist, all right? So I'm gonna stop sharing my computer screen for just one second, I'm gonna come back though. And when I stop sharing, I want you just to focus on me. So you just see me, all right? You see my calculator right here. So here's how we can determine this, it's real easy. For every million population in the United States, one million people, okay? For every million population, in the United States, there we go. For every million population in the United States, approximately right now today, 15% of the senior, 15% of the United States population is age 65 and older. So 1 million times 15%, that gives you 150,000 seniors. So 150,000 seniors per million in the United States. Now that means that if I have a half a million in my service area, I have 75,000 seniors. If I have a quarter of a million in my service area, I got about 37, 38,000 seniors in my service area. Now that's not everybody who needs our help. That's not all the nerds, but let's just stay with that. So 150,000 for every million. Now, the next thing, we're talking about great need, right? Great need, and who's gonna need help? Well, this is a Medicare fact, one, in three seniors age 65 and older go to the hospital every single year. So we're getting to the need now. So 33% uh, or take 150,000 people and divide it by three, that means for every million, you're gonna have 50,000 people go to the hospital, which makes sense. If you're in a territory with a million people, you probably have five or six hospitals that serve the same area that you do because you got 50,000 people that will go to the hospital who are just over the age of 65 in your service area. Now, not all of those people have resources and not all those people need you, right? We actually just talked about the people who have resources. So let's just stay on those for a second, right? Out of this 50,000 people, we know that 40,000, I'm sorry, 40% are on Medicaid. And then we also said that another 40% have some resources, but they can't quite afford the private pay level of services that we're offering from a true nerd standpoint. So that eliminates 80%. So 50,000 times 20%, well, that's gonna leave us with 10,000 people who have the resources. So you got people who are over the age of 65, you got people who will go to the hospital, you got people who have the resources for every million, 1%, 10,000 have the resources and they have some level of need, but let's make that need even greater, even greater. How many of them have five or more chronic conditions? And this is truly 20%, right? 80% of the patients who go through the Medicare system, go to the hospital, come home, they don't need additional help. That's why they don't get end up readmitted in the hospital. But about 20%, one in five, end up going back to the hospital within 30 days because it wasn't adequate enough to keep home on their own. So when you have 10,000 people times 20% again, that leaves you with 2,000. 2,000 nerds for every million people in your population. So that means that if I have half a million people in my area, divided by two, that's 1,000 nerds. Now, can you handle 1,000 nerds? Nope. If you only have a quarter of a million people in your territory, you still got 500 nerds. Could you handle 500 patients in one calendar year? Nope. Even if you only have 100,000 people in your territory, which is what I love about doing this, still gonna give you about 250 nerds. And what's cool if you only have 100,000 people in your territory and you only have 250,000 nerds, do you have a lot of competition if you only have 100,000 people? Nope. You probably got one main competitor. 
If you had 125 people sign up with you in one year, I guarantee at the average rate at 40 hours per week per client, because that's what a nerd needs. A nerd needs a lot more than just a bath visit, right? 40 hours. My clients, for those of you that know, I have magazines that we put out regularly, right? And the people who are featured in these magazines, this lady on the cover right here, this first one right here, they're all billing out more than 40 hours per week per client because they have nerds coming in, right? So if you have 125 people who sign on in one calendar year, averaging 40 hours per week per client, let's just do the math. 125 people sign on in one year times 40 hours. That's 5,000 hours a week times 52 weeks in a year. You're billing out 260,000 hours if they all stayed on for a year. I know we're talking hypothetical here. And at $35 an hour, which is the national rate, that's just under $10 million. And that's how it's done, right? Been doing this for literally 11 years. So let's continue, all right? Moving forward. So now we know how many exist in our territory and, and the potential from having it. So moving on to the next one here. Where are we gonna find these nerds, Steve? All right, this makes sense. I like it, these are nerds, I want the nerds. You, you, you're speaking to the choir here. We just all makes it, I want high need clients. 40 hours per week per client average. Even if I was in the middle of the boondocks with nobody in my territory, I can get 125 to sign up with me and the more people in my territory, the more competition, but 100 will give me the kind of revenue that I'm looking for, right? So how do I find these clients? Well, straight home care pulse report, right? The best places to get your clients are gonna be your home health professionals or home care, healthcare, healthcare professionals, I apologize. Assisted living, hospitals, hospice, home health, independent living facilities. One that is not on here that I really, really love, skilled nursing facilities love skilled nursing facilities the reason why they're not on here is because this is from 2021 in the 22 one which only came out a couple weeks ago i didn't get a chance to update the slides yet it shows skilled nursing facilities is coming back in there i personally like skilled nursing facilities why because who has the sickest patients skilled nursing facilities why because they were too sick to go home from the hospital directly so they had this bypass home first to go to rehab, be there for two to three weeks, and then they come home and then they stay home. So that's why I like skilled nursing facilities. But again, these are your professional referral sources. By you divide, and, I, and here's what I love about this, right? Look at this, right? You look at these percentages of revenue, and with the exception of Medicaid, because a lot of folks have Medicaid and we're not talking about Medicaid, but everything else, it's very low revenue. But you look at the assisted living, it's 15%, right? Look at their conversion ratio. They convert almost 50%, right? Hospitals, 15% of revenue, right? They convert almost 25, 20%. Hospice, 32% conversion ratio. Home health, 45% conversion ratio. That's huge. That means that if you get three referrals, you're signing on definitely one, but probably two of those three referrals, right? Even here, hospice, for every three referrals, you're signing up one. There is nothing else that's gonna give you that kind of return on your investment. And it is fantastic when you look at it from that perspective. So now we know where to go for business. The next question that comes up is, well, how am I gonna get in there, right? Like this makes sense, all right, so now I know skilled nursing facilities, hospitals, home health companies, hospice, uh, assisted living, independent living facilities. This is all great, Steve. How do I get into these accounts? We have to be able to go after the right targets in these communities that we're talking about here. And we have to create leverage. We have to create leverage. And here's your answer. This is the most important key contact because everybody, everybody who tries it, this is why everybody fails when they try to do this. Everybody thinks that they have to get to the social worker. And the social worker is going to be the one who's going to refer me, maybe a director of nursing. Now, that is true. She will be the one who makes the referrals, usually. However, 
if you've been marketing for a while, you know how difficult it is to get into an account to see a social worker. They don't return your phone calls. They don't respond to your emails. If you show up without an appointment, they're going to say no soliciting. Do you have an appointment? Why are you here? We have your information. I'm not going to. I'm. I don't need any more of your brochures. I met with you last week. Stop coming here. They're going to. They're going to get offensive, and with good reason. And I understand it. The reason why I'm saying this to you is because I want you to understand that social workers are the most overworked position in all healthcare. That's right, more overworked than your nurses. Everybody's talking about nurses and caregivers and everybody else and doctors and all these other medical professionals. Social workers are the most overworked of all of them. And they're the least compensated. Doctors make a lot of money. Nurses make a lot of money. Social workers do not make a lot of money. Social workers, and also a lot of them have the same level of school where they have a master's degree in MSW, and they also have an LCSW and a, and a JK LMNOP after their name, right? All these certifications, and they're lucky if they make $50,000. They have to go to school for six years to get this advanced degree, and they're lucky to make $50,000 a year, maybe 60 on the high side, whereas an equivalent nurse is going to make 90 or 100. A physician is making well over six figures, right? So it's very, they're undercompensated for the amount of work they have to do. That's why it's so hard for you to get in with them and they don't have they don't have the time to see you. So here's what you write down. I got you covered. You seek a relationship with the marketing representative. That's who you seek your relationship with. Why the marketing rep? Because they're the easiest person to find. Why the marketing rep? Because they're just like you trying to get referrals. Why the marketing rep? Because they're trying to grow their business and what you're leveraging is a strategic partnership. Please write that down. As a matter of fact, you can write down what I call a power partner. For those of you who are clients of mine, because a lot of you listening are clients of mine, you want to write down fast start lesson one, Lesson three, lesson one, lesson three, and lesson five. Fast start one, three, and five. Why am I telling you to write it down? Because that's where I teach you everything I'm discussing here. How to leverage, what are the conversations, what are the things they're looking for, what are the things that you have to do to get into these accounts, how to qualify the accounts, because not every one of those accounts I just said are created equal, right? There could be 50 skilled nursing facilities in your area and only four that have the nerves that you're looking for. So all of that I go over in Fast Start Lesson 1, Lesson 3, and Lesson 5. So all of you who are clients, make a note of that so you can go and watch that later on, okay? But for those of you who are not clients, why am I having you go to the marketing rep? Because it's simple easy to find a marketing rep. They're the ones that go to all the networking events that you should be going to. Because when you go to networking events, when you go to community events, when you go to vendor fairs and health fairs and hospitals and whatnot, who are the other people that go to those type of events? The marketing representative. So it's very easy to be able to be around them because you're gonna see them consistently. How do you leverage a partnership? You talk about creating a strategic partnership. That is a term that everybody in healthcare is trying to create. I want you to write down another term, an interdisciplinary team, an interdisciplinary team. Just like we as home care providers can't take care of all of our patients on our own and by ourselves, and we need to refer other people in like a medical equipment company, or maybe we work with a client where we're taking care of at night and they're going to an adult daycare in the day. Maybe we have a client who has a geriatric care manager, or we have a client that's on site at an assisted living community. Those are, those are, those are interdisciplinary teams. So you already have these type of clients and you want to get more of them. So it makes sense for you to form a strategic partnership. With an assisted living, we can keep the residents in the assisted living longer. How is that benefit for the assisted living? Well, just like you, you don't want your patients discharging off of services. Obviously, if they meet their goal or they pass away, that's just what it is what it is. But you don't like when the client comes off of service. Well, the same thing happens for the assisted living. They're trying to get to 100% occupancy. And every time a client discontinues services or they become, and this is a term, they become assisted, they become no longer AL appropriate. They're no longer AL appropriate. That means it's, it's not safe for them to stay there. Guess what they have to do? They have to ask that resident to move. They have to ask that resident to leave and they have to go on to a nursing home. And when they go to a nursing home and they have the resources, 
That means they're going to pay privately in a nursing home around the country right now for a private room is about $12,500 per month, $150,000 per year. That's the national average. What? So think about it from that patient's perspective. They're paying in the assisted living $60,000 a year, $70,000 a year. If we are partnered with that assisted living, we can also come in for the same 60,000 on top of it. Now they're still paying that 120, $150,000, but they stay in the assisted living, which is where they wanna be because nobody wants to move into a nursing home. That's a perfect example of a strategic partnership that we can form with our assisted livings. Now you can leverage other things such as collaborating on events, sponsoring activities, uh, promoting and advertising other people's events, co-marketing together, and so many other things that go over in those lessons that I talk to all of my clients who are on here. That's where I teach you how to do that. This is a, literally a 90 minute session condensed into 45 minutes. So I'm gonna move on to the next slide there because once you start to have this conversation with that marketing professional at the networking event, at the community event, at the CEU event, the wine and cheese tasting, the health or wherever you are, you start having that conversation eventually you want to go in and you want to tour and you want to learn about this community and you want to continue to leverage these things so that you can get a lunch and learn but before you get the lunch and learn you need to do a couple of things you got to be able to specialize right and you got to create specialty programs for those of you who are clients of mine i want you to write down under specializing fast start lesson four that is specifically where I teach you how to create your own specialty programs to differentiate you from your competition. So as you heard me talk before to all of you about if you have a million people in your territory and a half a million and a quarter of a million and then you know, only 100,000, right? If you only have 100,000, it's you and one other person. Maybe you don't need to specialize. But if you have a million people in your territory, like half the people on this call do, or half a million people, right? You're gonna have competitors. And you're gonna have your referrals to say, well, everybody says the same thing and everybody wants a lunch and learn. We don't want a lunch and learn on home care. Great, I didn't come in and ask you about doing a lunch and learn on home care. Matter of fact, this is what I love about doing this. I literally flew all the way out to Washington State three weeks ago, walked into an account with one of my clients and I'm holding up the business cards of the three people that I met. One was a social worker, one was admissions marketing, one was admissions, and one was marketing, right? Three different kids. I'm literally holding in my hand their contact information. When I went in there and I found out what they specialized in, and I talked about how we have a specialty program that can handle X, Y, and Z, they were interested in hearing about a lunch and learn from my client that they were able to schedule for a couple of weeks later. That's why you specialize. This market has over a million people where I went and visited. That's a lot of folks. There's a lot of seniors. There's also a lot of home care agencies. They didn't want to hear a lunch and learn on home care. But they did want to hear a lunch and learn on fall prevention or a lunch and learn on orthopedics or a lunch and learn on strokes or a lunch and learn on congestive heart failure. And not just on congestive heart failure, but note what you see on the screen here in the fall prevention, right? It is a lunch and learn on how we transition and take care of said patient, right? So here's how we take care of the fall risk patient. Here's what we do for that patient. Here's how we, that's something that people want to hear about because at the end of the day, folks, it's all about your outcomes. Another thing that I go over in Fast Start Lesson 4 for those of you who are my clients is tracking your readmission rates because it's all about the outcomes. So from an assisted living standpoint, they wanna work with somebody who has good rates. From a skilled nursing home out standpoint, they wanna work with somebody who has good rates. From a home health and a hospice standpoint, they wanna work with people who are keeping patients home and out of the hospitals. The hospitals themselves, every single professional referral source that I just showed with you at the very beginning here, they all want to work with people who are taking care of people and keeping them out of the hospital. Here's something that I'm going to show you that is staggeringly bad for the industry, but this is your opportunity in a crowded marketplace to separate yourself. From the Home Care Pulse Report last year, 2022 issue that came out, they actually talked about readmissions and they talked about how one in five home care agencies are actually tracking their readmission rates. Just one in five, which is horrible because that means that 80% of the agencies out there are not doing it. 
I'm going to hold up the updated version right here, and you can see it. It did not improve that much. It went from 1 in 5 to 1 in 4. So now 25% of the agencies who were surveyed last year are tracking readmissions, and 75% are not. Track readmissions. Every one of your softwares, if you have WellSky, if you have Smart Care, if you have Swift Ops, doesn't matter what software you have, every one of your software has a way to track it in there. Reach out to them, ask them how to track it, start tracking it. Because then you're speaking the language of the places that you're trying to get business from. You are a care provider, right? So as a care provider, you should be tracking the things that the people you're trying to get referrals from are tracking so that you can speak apples to apples. Again, for what purpose? To create this strategic partnership. Again, for what purpose? To create this interdisciplinary team. That's how you work together. These are the things that you want to be able to leverage, all right? After you do all of that, then you get your lunch and learn, all right? And when you do your lunch and learn correctly, you're going to get referrals. Now, for those of you who are clients, I want you to write down Fast Start Lesson 6. I literally hung up my computer, right? I did a webinar that was ending Fast Start Lesson 6 five minutes before I started this webinar with you today. I, you could ask Jen at the beginning. I was late getting on because I was wrapping up another class. That was Fast Start Lesson 6 review. I just went over how to do the 25-minute lunch and learn. And what are the things that you want to talk about and how to get better at your presenting skills and everything else. Because when you do lunch and learns regularly, and I want all of you to write this down, all of you should do at least 40 lunch and learns a year. At least. At least. Like in the some of you might be like, oh my God, 40 lunch and learns. That's going to cost a fortune. It's not going to be cheap. But if you want to have a multi-million dollar business, it takes money to make money and marketing budget should go to something, a big significant portion of a lunch and learn of your marketing budget should go towards lunch and learn. Now think about it from this perspective. If you have a million dollar business and you spend 5% of that million dollars on all things sales and marketing, that's $50,000. That's consistent. That's pretty standard. 5% of total revenue on all things sales and marketing. A lunch and learn, if you do 40 lunch and learns a year, averaging about $100 a lunch and learn, that's only $4,000, which is a little bit less than a half of 1% of a million dollar revenue. So it's not that much money to do 40 lunch and learns, but you should be doing at least 40 every single year. That's a little bit less than one a week. Give you a couple weeks vacation and you have a bunch of accounts and you're doing a lunch and learn twice a year in each of those accounts but that's the ultimate goal that's what my clients are doing which is why they're having uh, you know 36 percent revenue growth over the industry average of one percent revenue growth right i will do what other companies aren't willing to do to get results other companies can't get right that's what it is so lunch and learn those of you who are clients fast start lesson six is where i teach you how to do the lunch and learn but for everybody else make sure you're doing a lunch and learn at least 40 times a year okay next thing once you do that lunch and learn you have to close that first referral because the referral that's coming in you ask for a nerd you ask for a specific type of client they're going to give you that they're going to give you that referral. You got to close it. All right. You need to be able to go back and follow up on it. That's the reason why you have to close it. Now, if it's a referral to the wrong referral source type, like maybe they're referring hospice and they gave it to you, see it through. Give it to your interdisciplinary team. Give it to your hospice power partner. All of this, for those of you who are clients, this is what I go over with you in advanced training class, lesson two. So write that down, advanced training lesson two. That's where Steve teaches me about closing the first referral. All right. Also, I'm going to touch on this real quick. Fly through this. Okay? So I'm, I'm already 45 minutes into this, and we're get, I still have questions and answer, and I got another class that I got to teach. All right. So I have to jump off at the top of the hour. So five touch points on a referral. First, when a referral is made, when a referral is made, you immediately go there, you touch on that referral with the social worker, whoever is making a referral. This is all advanced training lesson two, folks, who are my clients. Uh, once they've signed up with you and they've committed to working with you. So when the referral is made, once they've signed up to become an actual customer. Okay. Number three, the day the case starts, the day the case starts. Number four, 30 days after the case starts to let them know that the patient is no longer in the readmission window and it was not a readmitted patient. And then number five is long-term. Number five is long-term. All right. So when the referral is made, once they've signed up for services, when you open the case, 30 days, long-term. I'll throw a bonus one out there for those of you who are clients of mine, caregiver training, 
which is something that takes place in between when they're signed up and before you start the care. Caregiver training is a bonus one. If you are a client of mine, I talk about caregiver training, write this down, advanced training, lesson four. That's where I talk about caregiver training. I also talk about it again in home care special ops, write down special ops, lessons one, two, three, and sorry, no, sorry, lesson three. Lesson three, special ops lesson three is where I teach you how to do caregiver training. And the final time is in the momentum class, which is your recruitment and retention class, and lesson five of momentum. That's where I teach you about caregiver training. So I literally talk about caregiver training all throughout the entire Hurricane University program, but it's part of this right here. Moving forward, the last thing is that your goal is to become part of their team. So that when you are now in there, if you are following up and think about what I just said, the five, five touch points on a referral. So you, 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 you know where to go for business, you start qualifying your accounts, you're targeting these nerd customers, you start to form a strategic partnership, you go through the marketing person, you're leveraging this partnership, you get your lunch and learn after creating a specialty program, right? You start getting referrals, you start closing it, you do those five touch points. What's gonna happen over time, you're gonna start getting more and more referrals, right? My, my, I'm going to say, unless you are a client of mine, none of you have five touch points when you get a referral. That one action in and of itself will help you to develop a relationship that leads to getting more referrals again and 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 again. And again, and again, and again right? That one action right there will help you to do that. So that this way, you start to become part of their team. And when you're part of their team, you're going to have outcomes meetings. You're going to be able to get more business. You'll be able to possibly form contractual relationships. Everything that I'm mentioning now, how to do that, for those of you who are clients, advanced training lesson six. It is the most advanced course lesson in the entire course, entire program, how to turn these accounts that are referring you here and there into long-term lasting referral sources that you could actually use to one day sell your business as part of showing a track record over years time of a certain number of referrals coming in from this account and how you can bridge that relationship over. That's what I did when I sold my company. I know it can be done and I've helped many people do it. But your goal is to become part of their team. You want it to be viewed that when you show up at this account, they don't view you as a vendor. They view you as an extension. You want your social workers to view you as an extension of their department, the extension that brings people home and comes back and follows up on it. That's all stuff that happens when you're part of their team, all right? So before I do your, your, your question and answer here, I do have a little offer for all of you. Many of you have probably heard about our boot camp that is coming up. The boot camps are absolutely phenomenal and fantastic. I love the boot camp. Uh, we had almost 200 people at the last boot camp, which was the max capacity that we have. So the event did sell out as they all do. This next one will sell out, believe it or not, even though it's in November, we already have about 25 people registered and confirmed to come to this event and 200 is max, so it's going to sell more than 10% already in the event is six months from now, it's crazy, all right? And so here's what I got for you. I call this program the Rapid Results, all right? I'm actually gonna hold it up here so you can see it in my hand here. This is the physical copy. I only have about eight or nine of these physical copies left, all right? So the first eight or nine of you that decide to move forward with this, you will get this, all right? Now, why am I talking about the Rapid Results? Because this is gonna give you help now and I'm going to throw in a boot camp ticket for free for this kit right here. So the first thing in here is what I call the blueprint for success. This is a business plan on how you can generate over $3 million a year in private pay revenue for your business. By itself, this is a $500 value. Literally tells you exactly how many patients, how many referrals, lead gen, marketing, objectives, how much it's going to cost you, the staff you need, the timeline. It's a whole business plan on how to generate $3 million in revenue and beyond. That's a $500 value. Also in here, you're gonna get two trainings. Number one, how to create those power partners, those strategic partners I talked about before, that training is in here. That's a $250 training that's included in this kit. Also, the art of closing, which is where you're going to now close, because I saw some of the questions that came through yesterday, and people said, how do I close somebody when, the, when my prices are so high? That's art of closing. That's a $250 training that's also in here. So we're at a $1,000 value so far. 
In addition, I'm going to give you several things in here. Here's a sales presentation binder and how to make it. This in and of itself is a $650 value that's included in here. Also in here, if that wasn't enough, here are sample schedules for you if you're the business owner doing the marketing. Or if you have a full-time marketing rep, here's their sample schedule. Here's a part-time marketing rep schedule. And then here's somebody who's in a dual role. Maybe you have a nurse who's also the marketing person. Sample schedules is also included in here. And... I'm also going to give you a strategy session, one-on-one -on -one coaching session with one of my coaches for free included, which is another $250 value. So at the end of the day, everything that is in this rapid results kit comes out to more than $2,500 worth of stuff. But the good news is it's not $2,500. The actual rapid results itself is only $1,000. And I'm going to make this the easiest decision that you have to make. If you were to go to my website right now and say, hey, I want to come to your boot camp. How much is the early bird price of the boot camp? The early bird price is only $7.99. So here's what I'm going to do. I want you to come to a boot camp. So I'm going to give you, if you do this today and you go to my website and you say, yes, I want this rapid result today. I'm going to charge you only $7.99 give you a free ticket to the boot camp and the other $2,500 worth of stuff for just $7.99 because I have eight of these things left and I want to move these. So you, you can be one of eight people to get a ticket to the boot camp and the rapid result kit for just $7.99. So you can go to my website, homecarevolution.com, and you can get a rapid result kit today. You can just click on help or whatever, click on get started, I think it says, get started, give us your contact information, make an appointment and say, I want one of these, and $7.99 is your price, all right? But, or just buy a bootcamp ticket. If you buy a bootcamp ticket and you mention this webinar in there, we'll give you the rapid results kit for free. So it's $2,500 worth of stuff, plus the bootcamp ticket, which now makes it like $3,500 worth of stuff, for just $7.99. So there's my five minutes. I'll leave this up on the screen. Jen, you have some questions for me? I sure do. Uh, thank you so much for that, Steve. Like your uh, master and uh, seriously, if you haven't been to one of the camps before, uh, it's a must, it's an absolute must. Um, uh, I've been uh, uh, before and it was awesome. I learned so much. Um, and Steve, you're just such a pleasure to like listen to um, and everything. Thank so you. thank you. Um, okay, so uh, as we talked about, uh, uh, a lot of folks, uh, actually a lot of people submitted questions uh, before the webinar. Um, we picked out just a few that kind of weren't gonna be covered during the, the presentation that Steve was doing. So I wanna tee those up now. Um, so, uh, my first question for you is from Tanya at HomeWatch Caregivers. She wanted to know how do you balance the ideal customer diversifying your revenue streams? So how do you uh, how do you balance the ideal customer profile with diversifying your revenue stream? So with that one right over there, with with that target customer that I mentioned, with the nerds there, to diversify your revenue streams, this allows you to do things such as concierge programs, which is something that a lot of my clients are doing, where they do it's above and beyond. It's not just sending a caregiver in, but it's sending a caregiver in with almost like that. And for lack of a better term, like the Batman, Bruce Wayne, you know, with his Alfred, who's the butler, right? So I call it the white glove service where it's a caregiver who's also not been the finishing school. Like I don't want to go that far with it, but they are a customer service representative. So they're going to take care of all of the physical needs, but they're also going to be making sure that house is clean and spotless. They're going to be kind of managing the house a little bit. This allows you to attract a higher quality caregiver because you're going to be obviously compensating this person significantly greater. Um, you're also going to include other things such as having uh, telephony or not telephony, uh, monitoring devices like um, uh, the company Envoy at Home. Envoy at Home, I love them. They're one of my partners and they can actually monitor people in the house without using cameras because some people don't like the idea of having a camera in their house and it's too intrusive so they use monitoring devices like uh, uh, an alarm system to know and understand the habits so if they notice that somebody went into the bathroom at three o'clock in the morning and the caregiver is not there and they haven't come out within 15 minutes 
they'll call the house, you know, because they're monitoring that the situation just to make sure that the person didn't slip and fall and they're laying on the floor. That could prevent a stroke, that could prevent a lot of different things from happening, unnecessary pain and suffering. So that's included in the price. Uh, having geriatric care management included in the price. So these are things that you can do when you have this nerd customer, you can bring in these additional revenue streams to offer additional services beyond just sending a caregiver in there. Concierge, geriatric care management, um, telephony devices. I even go as far as I've seen somebody uh, do meal preparations. And they created this. I was like, well, well, I actually eat the. I use the Eat Clean Bro. That's how I how I keep my fitness level up, and so I don't have time to always prepare food. Well, I can go to Eat Clean Bro and order food that gets delivered to my house once a week. Well, you can do that as a dietary restrictions for your patient, and you can do that as well. So by having this nerd customer, it really does allow you to offer different revenue streams that same target customer and increase your profit, your, uh, your, your serviceability, but also cater to the needs of people that, that aren't getting met. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, Steve. Okay. So uh, maybe we have time for like uh, one or two more questions um, yeah. and then we'll be wrapping it up. Um, so uh, from Sherry at 24-7 Circle Care, um, she was wondering, is it advisable to charge according to the level of care and or the number of hours and uh, visits? 100%. I, I, this is something I talk about heavily in advanced training lessons three and four for those of you who are my clients, um, where I go over uh, inquiry management and closing. Even in that rapid results kit that I just showed, if everybody wants that, how do you close a patient? So to answer Sherry's question, yes, you should be charging a tiered pricing based on the need of the patient. It only makes sense, right? If I have somebody who calls me and they only want companion level care, and they only actually need companion level care, I could send anybody in that house. If somebody is a bed bound patient though, and they need transfers, they need showers, they need toileting help, now I may only have I may only have one caregiver that can handle it and she's got 10 years experience she 10 years experience she's going to command a higher salary as anybody would with 10 years experience and I should pay her accordingly well in order for me to pay her I'm going to have to charge accordingly for it so yes you should have a tiered pricing schedule uh, uh, services and base it on the need of the patient and, and it goes up. It could be your base rate is $30. You know, your your incontinent level is 32. Your your bed bound is 34 or whatever it is. It's tiered out, but then those extra dollars of revenue go to find the caregivers and compensate the caregivers for the experience needed to meet the need of the patient. And how do you close them? Advanced training lesson four, the art of closing. That's what's in this kit. Love it. Great question. Awesome. Okay, so I'm going to make this our last question. Okay. Uh, so from Amy, uh, she was wondering, how do you recommend training staff to understand these points? Oh, that's a fantastic question. It's it's so so. There's several ways you can do it, right? For first, let me, let me remove myself from it. I don't want to do a plug, right? Because the, the easy one is yeah, have them listen to my program. I just talked about training people. Right. This is how I do training. They can watch these lessons and everything else. That's me. I can serve that. So that's that's one way, right? But the other way that you can do it is you can bring them to events. Right, so 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 say you don't go to a boot camp, right? Bring them to a to your your local associate, the Home Care Association of America, the state chapter event, right? Maybe it's a big expense to fly to the annual conference. Go to your state chapter event. Um, there are other people out there besides me that do training. Home care polls, I mentioned them before, right? Their benchmark study. They have training programs as part of a service offering that they do for office staff members. And so there's different things that you can do to invest in it. The way that I view it, the way I even view my courses, like the Hurricane University, you heard me reference, and a lot of my clients that I do train all of their staff on it, even if they're not a marketer, because they need to know all of these things. This is what we're trying to do as an overview of the entire business. The way I view it is we ask our caregivers to do continuing education to maintain their license. They got to do eight hours every single year. Well, I think that our schedulers should learn something and our recruiters should learn something and, and, and even us ourselves should learn things. So invest in training for your staff. It's going to help your business tenfold. 
The more experienced your schedules are, the more they know about your business operationally, even parts that they're not able to do, it's going to help with the big picture and getting it to where you want it to be and casting these visions. So that's how I, I'd invest in training for the whole company and do webinars and whatnot for them. And, and just a little bit of time, an hour a month, an hour a week, something like that. Nothing crazy. Same thing you'd expect your caregivers to do with your office staff and watch what happens to your business. I think that's such a good point. Cross training is like oh, an overlooked opportunity um, for folks who are interacting with your clients all the time anyway. Um, like, why not? Yeah. So awesome. I love it. Amazing. So thank you so much, everybody. Uh, if you want to stick around for just five more minutes, um, oh, I, I'm going to just uh, introduce a little bit of what Augusta has to offer. Um, and uh, Steve, I want to just say thank you again. Like you're, as I said, a master um, at home care marketing, and I appreciate you so much um, uh, for sharing this with our group today. So thank you, my friend. Um, just five minutes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, five minutes on Augusta. If you haven't heard of us before, we like to think of ourselves as inbound caregiver recruiting. And what I mean by that is that the job of an HR manager recruiter has just always been, there's no wrong reason for this. It's just always been that you post a job somewhere, indeed.com or something like that. You pay a whole bunch of money for that. You get in a ton of applicants and your HR manager recruiter spends a ton of their time looking through all the applications or resumes to figure out are any of these decent candidates? And then they spend a ton of time trying to reach out to all those candidates, um, phone, text, email. By the time the recruiter gets to them, the caregiver has most certainly forgotten which agency that you are calling from. That's just how the market is today. On average, caregivers are applying to 16 jobs at one time. So if you don't contact them within minutes or if they don't have an appointment scheduled with you immediately, um, a lot of times you don't get a hold of them. That's the reason why the average home care agency today hires only between one and 5% of their applicants. So it means that you're getting a ton of applicants, uh, but not able to hire them because either they're not the right type of applicant for your agency, um, or uh, you're not getting to them fast enough. So when I talk about Augusta as inbound caregiver recruiting, we automate that for you. So that way your HR manager recruiter can spend their valuable time speaking with the best possible applicants. They don't have to waste their time sorting through resumes, sorting through applications, trying to schedule uh, that phone screen with your best applicants. It just happens for them automatically. It's uh, a real innovation for home care agencies. Um, and as you can see, it's built for home care. So that's all we do. As I mentioned, I used to be a caregiver. I've been working in senior care since 2009. And same thing with my, uh, we only focus on home care agencies. So I put a whole bunch of our customers up there. We work with a whole bunch of franchises. We work with a whole bunch of independent agencies. Uh, we also prioritized integrating with the other systems that most home care agencies already use today. Um, Cause we don't want to have to make you learn a whole bunch of new stuff. So uh, if there's an integration that you want that you don't see up here, definitely contact me and let me know. Uh, I wanted to share a very quick case study about our work. Um, so Greg Sanchez was one of our very first clients. He's got a pretty good sized home care agency. It's in Pasadena uh, in Monrovia, California. He's got two uh, franchise territories, usually has around 200 employees. Um, and he's done a whole bunch of different uh, tests with us. Um, and the most recent one is really impactful. I want to share it with you very quickly. So with uh, Greg's agency, we were able to get him 210% more interviews with caregivers from the existing applicants he already had coming in. And we were able to reduce his cost per completed interview by 54%. Um, and uh, so as you can see on the numbers on the screen here, basically I've got a without Augusta and with Augusta. So what we did basically is we improved his applicant experience tremendously. There was a whole bunch of points when candidate dropping out of the funnel um, and, and no fault of the recruiter, they just didn't have the right information about applicants a lot of the time to identify who is a good one. So part of what our software does is it gives recruiters the right information and also automatically qualifies and geolocates the best candidates 
specific to where your clients live. So obviously it doesn't really matter how close they are to your home care agency because they probably come there, what, once, twice a year maybe. Uh, but we geolocate your caregivers to where your clients live, give the recruiters the right information. And what that all pans out to is more interviewing up and ultimately less ad spend per completed interview. And this also results in more hires. Right now uh, with the clients we have, um, uh, we're seeing um, an average cost per hire from your uh, ad spend um, at less than $150 um, on ad spend per completed hire. Um, so what you're seeing on the screen is just per completed interview. But when we're talking about actual hire on ad spend, our clients are seeing 150 or, or, or less usually, um, which I believe if you look at the home care pulse data is uh, about a quarter spend uh, per completed hire on ad spend. So that's just a little bit about Augusta. I'd love to share more with you and learn about your agency to see if you're uh, one of our ideal customers as well. Um, so definitely get in touch with me. Here's my contact information. Feel free to book a demo, call, email. Um, and we do have a special offer for those folks here today. Uh, if you decide to sign up with Augusta by the end of the month, you are going to get a 20% discount. So make sure you mention the webinar. Um, and uh, please do reach out to me and reach out to Steve and his team uh, so that you can get started with the rapid results and go to one of those amazing. That I will let everybody go. Um, thank you so much for sticking around and thank you again, Steve. You are awesome. Uh, uh, and thank I you. appreciate everybody's time. Yeah. All right. Have a good one, everybody.